Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Is there any people still drunk? Yeah, this is so bad. Being the first speaker the day after the conference party, like, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, I hope you won't fall asleep during the presentation. So, as my MC said, uh, my name is Frederick Carper. No relation with who you are thinking right now. Uh, please, please, no association with that specific person. So, uh, I'm a senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. Uh, for those of you that had this big interrogation point in your front, front uh, in your face, my job is to give love to developer. This is basically what why the company pay me is to do conferences, talk about technology, share my passion about technology, and help people to be successful on our platform. So if you tweet today, please feel free to use hat f harper for good, bad things, uh, things you like, things you didn't like, things you want to share about people. I really like to read all the tweets after the presentation. And I'm going to record this presentation, and the slide's going to be online after on outofcomfortzone.net. This is my personal blog with blog posts in French and English, most of the time in French, as you probably already understand my beautiful French accent. So today, I'm going to talk about fixing the mobile web uh, by thinking about Firefox OS. So this is basically an introduction about the platform that may or may not be a platform that you know because it's not available right now in North America. But it's still int interesting to see what we've done, what we're going to do, and what would make sense for you as a developer in the IT world. So what's happening right now? When you talk to your customers, when you think about what's going to be your next product, what, what you're going to work on, What's going to be the next mobile platform you're going to publish your application? Most of the time, it's about, hey, should I start with an iOS application? Should I start with an Android application? Because those are the most popular platform right now. And if you're lucky, at some point, you may have a discussion about, hey, should I start with a native application, either on iOS, either on, on Android, Windows Phone, name it. Or should I create a web application, a web mobile application? That's going to work on different devices. That's going to work on different smartphone and tablet. So I call this that kind of sumo five question that we have, mostly since HTML5 is there. Hmm, should I start with a native? Should I start with a web? Which one is it's better? And most of the time, it's, it's real bad because the answer is like, Let's go with a native application. That's going to be probably faster. Uh, I'm going to have access to more features, more uh, function that I need as a developer to give a great experience to my user. And I would like to be, I would like that answers to be HTML5. Because I really like that technology, I'm super excited about it. This is amazing for developer because we've got new features, we've got new elements that we need as developers to create more easily good experience for user. But sometimes HTML5 seems a little bit fake because even, again, as a developer creating mobile application, I'm missing some of the things that I would need. And this is why the answer for the question, should I go native, should I go mobile, uh, web mobile application, it's most of the time going on the native side because as a developer, I don't have everything I need. As far as HTML5 is amazing, it's not there yet when we think about mobile development. And this is kind of sad because um, I'm not a big fan of statistics, but there is those kind of numbers everywhere about the number of devices that will be available online at some point. And those people are talking about 38 billion devices. Of course, if we remove what we call the Internet of Things, remove the things that the, uh, the devices that people won't have to interact with, we still have a lot of devices out there. Think about laptop, think about tablet, phablet, smartphone, think about e-reader, think about the TV, think about the consoles. And what is the common point from all those devices? This is the browser. Most of the time, this is the browser. This is the way people interact with the web. This is the way people access to the internet on those devices. So my goal today is to at least try to uh, make you see HTML5 a little more powerful, a little more interesting for you, and show you a little bit the future of what's coming with HTML5 and how you can reach more people, reach a new audience using technology you know, and using the technology we didn't have until right now. So it's really about what you deserve about the, uh, as a developer, as people who are creating software, as designer, as people creating the web of today and tomorrow. So 
Small introduction about Firefox OS. Uh, we had the idea of Mozilla two years ago about, hey, um, there's a lot of people that don't have access to the web, that don't have access to the internet. And part of the mission of Mozilla, actually the mission of Mozilla, is to give access to the web to more people. So two years ago we said, hey, let's create an OS that's going to work with web technology, that's going to work on low entry devices, and let's find partners and create some smartphones for those people. So they're going to be, they're going to have access to the internet uh, on those devices. So we built it. We launched our first phone one year ago, and those phones are made, that, that OS is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So everything you see on the platform goes from the telephony application to sending SMS to the emails. It's built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's pretty amazing. It's open source, so has everything we do. You go on GitHub, you can view the source, you can play with it, you can help us to fix bugs, to add features, uh, just to see how is it working. And this is the power of the open source community behind it because there is not only paid staff at Mozilla building Firefox OS, there's many, many, many uh, volunteers working on that platform that believe that it's the future of the web. So we launched our first phone one year ago. Now we are in 15, 16 countries right now. As you can see with the flags, uh, we talk about Greece, we talk about Hungary, Venezuela, Mexico. We're talking most of the time about emerging market. And this is our goal with Firefox OS. So we launched with seven mobile operators, four hardware partners, because one of the things is that we're not creating hardware at Mozilla. We're just creating the OS. We're just creating the operating system, doing the code behind it. So we work with partners to make sure that those phones will be available, available somewhere. So I have a couple of phones out there. ZD Open, Alcatel Will Touch Fire, we have two Geeks phone, LG FireWeb, and this is only the beginning because there's more, more phones coming. But this is not something we're aware here. This is not something we, we know because it's not available in North America. We did not launch in Canada, we did not launch in, in the United States because our primary goal is emerging market. Those are the low entry phones and the goal is really to uh, help people using feature phone right now to move to smartphones, to have access to the web. It's targeted to people that may not have the money to buy the latest and the greatest iPhone. The iPhone 5C with a 64 gigabyte, it costs like 1,000 bucks without any contract. This is a lot of money. We can afford this. Many people can't afford this. Or maybe they just want to be stuck with the contract. We're so lucky in Canada. We have so many good uh, contracts uh, with those uh, providers that give us the phone for two or three hundred bucks, but we're stuck with those people for two to three years. So uh, some people just don't want this. So as you can see right now in Canada, you can buy a phone online. So you can go on the eBay store from ZTE for one hundred dollar, one hundred bucks, full price, no contract. You get an unlocked phone, an unlocked smartphone running Firefox OS. Of course, as I tell you, those are low entry devices. So don't compare that phone to the latest iPhone, the latest Android. You may or may not be the target for those phones, but those are really interesting, working well. It's faster than using HTML and CSS. And of course, because it's a smartphone, we have a marketplace. And as a developer, we don't force you to publish your application to the marketplace. Of course, we highly suggest you to do so, because that's going to be the first place that user will look for your application. But there's no fee. We don't charge you to be a developer on Firefox OS because at the end you're building web application. So this is really interesting. And we have a small option, uh, not a small option, actually it's a good feature, called the Adaptive App Search. And inside the phone, users don't have to install application to play with them or to test them because the web is the platform. So in that case, in that example, I said, hey, I'm a soccer fan. I type soccer in the adaptive app search, and I got a lot of applications that are related to soccer. And when I'm going to open those applications, the experience will be, uh, will be adapted to my search. So really interesting, really good for people that have low bandwidth, uh, really good for people that don't want to have like 10 screens of application that you use once and you will never use at another time uh, when, you, when you use that smartphone. So, what is a Firefox OS application? Because I'm talking about the web, I'm talking about Firefox OS application. There is two types of application. There is what we call the hosted application. So basically those applications are the ones that you put on your own server. You host your application yourself. Could be on a GitHub pages, could be on Amazon, could be on Windows, Azure, name it. And in that case, you can still publish your application to the marketplace. 
but we don't have to certify your application. We don't have to verify your application. And that's going to be easier for you because when, you're going to want, when you want to update your application, it's just on your server. You don't have to republish the marketplace. So it's really fast for uh, app publishing. There is also the package application. And this is probably what you already use if you publish on another mobile platform. So this is basically a zip file with all the files you need to create your Firefox OS application. That means JavaScript, CSS, HTML, the sounds file, the images, name it, everything you need to run your application is in the, that package, is in that zip file. In that case, you're going to upload your application to the marketplace, and we're going to serve the application to uh, the rest of the people. You can use vanilla, what I call vanilla HTML, or HTML5, because we really like that word. It's really marketing-ish. So uh, you can just use pure HTML, CSS, JavaScript with no libraries. You can use whatever libraries you want also. Any libraries working in a browser should work on Firefox OS also. And the magic really start when you want to have better integration. We have what we call the web APIs. I will go a little more deeper on those. But there is three levels of web API. And I will, be, I will get back on those things. But this is really where the magic happened. This is really where we want to fix the mobile web. So starting today. If you have an HTML application, it's working in a browser, the only thing you have to do is to add a manifest file to your application. This is basically a JSON file. This is basically a file that it's a description of your application. What is the name? What is the version? Who made it? What is the launch path? Really important because uh, this is how Firefox OS will know how to start your application and icons of the application when you're going to submit this to the marketplace. And if you have any specific permission, that you want the user to give you access to, so your application will be able to access to those specific elements of, uh, of the OS. So really important, but really simple at the same time. So let me show you how it's working. So what I have right now, I have Ember uh, ember.js, uh, it's to do MVC. Actually, I will start, that would go better. So I have a small application right now. Uh, for those of you that don't know to do MVC, this is a project on GitHub. This is basically a small to-do application, uh, nothing complex, really a small to-do list. So I can say test here, I can say FITC Toronto, I say, okay, I'm done with FITC Toronto, test, I don't need this. So really small to-do list, uh, to-do application. What is great is that they create that application using many framework or many architecture. So if you want to uh, do a comparison between those architecture or framework, you can just go on GitHub and you have the same project done again, again, and again with all those frameworks. So in that case, what I did, I, I get the one using Ember.js. So it's working on my browser. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Firefox OS application with that Ember.js. So because I'm lazy, I already create, uh, create a folder with, uh, let me show you this in Sublime. So I already created a folder with JavaScript. There's nothing in the JavaScript. This is what I call my Firefox OS starter. It's just because I'm creating always small project for a presentation. I already have my accounts, and I already created my manifest, uh, my manifest file. And this is basically uh, taking my icons. This is uh, the name of the developer, and I have nothing special in that, uh, in that application. This is just a starter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my Ember.js file to that starter project of Firefox OS. So if I wanted to do this manually and take more time during my presentation so you can see me drag and drop and write some stuff, uh, the only thing that I would have to do is to, on my Ember.js application, just create the manifest file and add the icons if I wanted to publish to the marketplace. So right now, I already created my Firefox OS application. But if you don't see, uh, if, you, if you want to see what I did, because you just have to, I don't want you just to believe me, I want you to show you this is working. So what I'm going to do, uh, you don't see the top of my browser, but what I'm going to do, I'm in Firefox, and you already have the tools to test your application, to test your Firefox OS application. So if I go in Tools, Web Developer, I have what we call the App Manager. And the App Manager is basically where uh, I'm going to manage my application. So this is where I'm going to use the simulator. This is where I'm going to push to a real device. Uh, and in my case, what I'm going to do, I have my two type of application right there. So I have my package application that I can add to my app manager. I have my hosted application. So in my case, because it's local, I'm going to use a app package. I'm going to go on my desktop, Firefox OS starter. 
And I need to point uh, the App Manager to the folder where I have my manifest.webhap. I'm going to open this in my App Manager, and as you can see right now, I have a super beautiful name for my application, but you see uh, the content of my uh, manifest file. And my application is there, so what I'm going to do, you can see it at the button, I'm going to start the simulator. So in my case, I have two choices. I'm sorry, this is really at the end of the screen. But I have two choices, uh, Firefox OS 1.2, Firefox OS 1.3. So those are not part of the browser. They're only add-on that I need to add to Firefox, so, uh, to Firefox, but they're free. And that gave me the opportunity to test my application without having a real device, like any other platform. So what you see now, it's Firefox OS 1.2, the first time that I started Firefox OS. I did not have any application. I have my adaptive search that I just quickly introduced you before. And if I scroll, I have some basic application already installed on my device with the marketplace. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell, hey, please install my application to my simulator. So I'm going to click Update. And I'm going to see my application installed on Firefox OS. If I run my application, I'm going to have my to-do list already there. So I'm going to be able to say, hey, FITC, test, and it's working like uh, it was working in the web. Same exact thing, same application. The only thing I do, the only thing I did was to, uh, was to have my manifest file and had icons because at some point I wanted to publish that application to Marketplace. Of course, if you look at this, this is not the best experience you will ever have on the smartphone because first, First thing is that it's not adapted to a small screen. And this is okay because this is not okay to publish an application like this, but that was the, it was the goal of my presentation to show you, hey, I have a little more work to do because that application was working in a browser. Um, browser. I may want to use responsive web design or use a framework like Bootstrap to be sure that my application will fit on different screen size. But the idea was just to show you that I have a web application it's now working as a Firefox OS application. So really easy to do uh, and, and uh, really like just, as I said, just adding the manifest file, some icons if you want to publish. That may or may not work like this, depending on the framework, depending on the code you're doing, but uh, most of the time it's working very well. And if you have any problem, you know my name now, you're gonna know my email, ping me, let me know how it's working or not. So this is where the magic starts. This is what, uh, what we call the web APIs. And this is the APIs that we had in Firefox OS on JavaScript, on CSS, on HTML to give you access to the things you don't have access right now with HTML5. So first things we have, what we call the regular APIs. So those are regular web APIs. And those categories of APIs are mostly, I would say, security categories. So the regular APIs are the APIs that you can use in any type of application, either hosted application or package application. And we don't need to certify your application because those don't have any security flaw. You, there is no chance you do something wrong with those APIs. And we have things like Alarm API, API Archive, API Battery Status, uh, think about web activities, push APIs, uh, web payment, so something really interesting, Web FM API. So those things are not existing in the standard right now. And what is great is that you may think that, hey, Fred, you're talking about API that are not existing, that are only working in Firefox OS. But of course, we're Mozilla. Our goal is not to create something proprietary. It's not to create something that's going to work only on Firefox OS. So we are working with the W3C to be sure that those API will be available at the standard at some point. And if at some point the standard change, we're going to change Firefox OS to reflect the standard because we don't want you to create a Firefox OS application. We want you to create web application. So let me show you some example on how it's working. So it's already working. Those APIs are already there. So we have the MBN light sensor. And the MBN light sensor is basically on a real phone. I have my sensor on top of it. And it will detect the, the, uh, the power of the light near the MBN light near my phone. So this is not something I can do right now with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So what I'm going to do with Firefox OS using the web API, I can add an event listener on device light. And in that code sample, I'm going to say, hey, please call that anonymous function. And uh, in my case, I'm just showing something in the console. But I will say, hey, event.value. 
And that's going to be, give me a value in lux between uh, 0 and 10,000. Between like there's no light and you're probably going to be uh, blind soon. So uh, what is great is that that could be interesting if you're building, I don't know, a reader application and you detect that there is no there is not too much light. So probably someone is reading something during my presentation or maybe you're at that. So you may want to change the background because you don't want to hurt the user. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to connect this to the Hammonator. So let me start an application so you can see my screen. I'm going to connect my phone. And what you're going to see to the left in that screen, we'll go down a little bit, is a copy of my uh, real device. The only thing is that that will appear uh, to be a little bit slow. It's not Firefox OS. It's the uh, it's, it's Java application that I'm using to show the screen. So the frame rate that the frame rate that you're going to see on the screen is not the same that I have on my real device. But at least you're going to be able to see what's on my device right now. So I'm going to disconnect the simulator. And what you're going to see at some point. And what you're not seeing right now, there's always a demo guide at some point that do the trick. Here we go. So I have a new option right now, and it's called Full Keon. So this, oh, you don't see it. This is called Full Keon. So uh, this is basically my phone that AppManager detected. So once I connected my phone, I got this small icon to say, hey, Fred, uh, AppManager want to connect to you. Do you let me uh, do it? So I said yes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new application called the Firefox OS Boilerplate. So this is again available on uh, GitHub. This is a project that one of my colleagues started, uh, Robert Nyman, and we all work on those things, uh, that application to have different options. And this is not a boilerplate in, in, uh, like a starter kit. This is mostly a boilerplate of all the web API implementation. So this is a demo application that you can use as a developer to know, to see working codes instead of just uh, looking at the documentation. So in my case, I will publish, I will push that application on my real device. So at some point, you will see my application on my device right now. If I open the application, you're going to see that this is probably the most boring application you saw in your life. There's a lot of buttons, but it's really useful as a developer. So I'm going to go in the web API section, and I have that ambient light option. If I click on it, I'm going to see, oh, I'm going to zoom this because you're not going to be able to see. So you see that the value change, if I put my hand, I'm going to go near to zero because I just, I'd like from my phone. So this is done with JavaScript. If I go look at the code in Sublime, Firefox was boilerplate, JavaScript web app, I'm looking for ambient light. You're going to see that uh, there is way more light, uh, line of code than I'm in, in my example. But basically, what is important is the window on, that on device light calling my anonymous function and uh, trying to get my looks, my lux value with event value. So again, this is not something that you're able to do. Uh, you were not able to do right now with HTML5, but this is something we had in uh, Firefox OS. So this is really interesting. Another example is the battery status. So right now, any web application you do, working in a browser, working on any other smartphone, you cannot get the battery status. So we create an API for this. You can call navigator.battery, and after this, you can access to a lot of options. You can do battery.level, battery.charging, to know uh, if it's charging or not, uh, the charging time, the discharging time, and of course, you can have even listener. And that could be useful if you're creating a, game, a web application and the user is near to uh, have his phone dead. The, 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 the phone will be dead. The battery will be drained totally. So you want to know that because you want to save the game and, and maybe notify the user that, hey, stop playing because you, you're going to lose your game if you uh, don't stop playing. Or you need to save the game or you do it yourself as a developer. So again, using JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS, no need to learn a new SDK, no need to, uh, just need to learn a new uh, API. So if I go back to my phone, just to show you that I'm not lying, that it's working, if I click check battery, 
you're gonna see I had two options there. The battery level, 70%, and this is charging because my USB is connected to my computer. So, I don't know for you, but for me, I think this is really exciting. Of course, there's more exciting thing than checking the battery status. But the idea is that I can do this in JavaScript. I can use the technology I know to do this on my mobile application. So those APIs, the goal is that that will give you the opportunity to really give a better experience to user, to really integrate a lot more of your application into the platform. There's the API that we call the privilege API. So this is another security level. So you can use those API, but only on package application. So you won't be able to publish your application to host your application if you use the privilege API. You're going to have to publish your application in the marketplace because we're going to have to validate your application. So in that case, think about the browser, contact, device, storage, API, and there's the browser web API. And usually people say, hey, Fred, what's going on? Like there's already Firefox on Firefox OS, so there's already a browser. And Firefox OS is kind of a browser in itself because it's running HTML, CSS, JavaScript. The OS is made with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So why a browser API? And basically, that's going to be really helpful when you're going to do uh, no what authentication. So in my case, I'm going to use a high frame. This is the only time that I really like to use an high frame. And the magic word is going to be mouse browser. So I'm going to say, hey, that high frame is going to use a web API that's going to be a mouse browser. And in my case, uh, that's going to be interesting as an example. I'm creating an application for Remember the Milk. Uh, this is a to-do application. I don't know. I have something with to-do uh, or task list. And I'm creating a Firefox OS application for Remember the Milk. But if you're a user of Remember the Milk, I don't, have, I don't want to uh, have your username and password. So what I need to do in that browser, I'm going to point you to Remember the Milk. As a user, you're going to use my application. You're going to enter your username and password to connect to the website. So you don't give me the username and password. At some point, you're going to say, hey, yes, I want Fred's application to have access to my data. So I'm going to be able to write and read some data. And at some point, what's going to happen is that Remember the Milk will authorize me by sending, sending me a key. But what will happen is that it will send me back to a new URL, putting the key in the URL. So I need to be able to get that key. But I'm in the Firefox OS application, so I have my iframe. What I did in my case is that I had an event listener, again, really useful for most everything you want to do, and I used the most browser location change. And I know that when the URL change, I want to call my function, and in my function, I'm checking, hey, is there the, I don't remember, I think it's key ID parameter. If it's there, I'm getting the key, closing the browser, don't need it anymore, removing the iframe, and I have the key to access your information without having your username and password. So really useful in that case. This is another web API. It's called, uh, it's in the privilege API. There's also the certify API. And this one is a little bit tricky because you cannot use the certify API. It's, it's only for uh, application part of the OS, application part of the OS from the OEM, from the partners. So uh, this is kind of weird because I'm talking to you about API that you cannot use. But what is great, we created something called the web activities. That's going to give you access to some of those functions. Because now if you read the slide, you're probably worried about the camera API. What's going on? I cannot use the camera. Like, what's wrong with Firefox OS? Or I cannot use like the other stuff like web SMS, web telephony, or get some setting APIs. So you cannot use those things right now. It's good that you know that those exist because at some point it can go from certified to privileged and you're going to be able to use it. So nothing is set in stone, things can move. It's good to know that they are there. But as I told you, there is something called web activities and web activities will give you access to those things. So this is another, uh, this is another web API. You have things like browse, dial, open, new mail, new SMS, new contact. The pick, pick is really interesting and this is those web activities, you can use those in hosted and package application. So if we think about the pick activity, this is where you're going to be able to get a picture from the user in my example. So I'm going to say, hey, new mouse activity, name pick. This is the name of my web activities that I want to use. And I want to have some data. And the type is going to be JPEG. So this is what I want as a developer in my application. What's going to happen when I'm going to run that uh, JavaScript code? The screen to the right will uh, show to the user. And the user will have to choose, hey, do I need to take a picture in a wallpaper, in my gallery, or can I use my camera to take a picture? So as a developer, you don't know where the picture comes from, but you don't care. You have the picture. And this is a secure way for the user to give you access to what you need as a developer in your application. 
After this, I'm going to manage what I receive. Is the user send me a picture on success? I'm going to access to the picture and do whatever I want. In my case, I'm going to just uh, set the uh, source of my image with the uh, blob that I receive. It can be an error also if the user push cancel. Hey, I need to do something. I don't have the image that I need to do uh, the task that I have that I wanted to do in my application. There's also the dial web activities, just to give you another example. This is why uh, it's really important to think about the web activities because I don't want developers to be able to call anyone I want, uh, anyone I don't want. I don't want application to do phone calls on my behalf. So in that case, I cannot use, it's why I cannot use the web telephony uh, API. So in that case, I'm going to use the mouse activity. I'm going to say, hey, this is a dial activities, and this is a phone number that I want to call. What's going to happen is that the telephony application will open, the phone number will be there. No call will be made. The user will have to push the uh, green button himself or herself, or will have to cancel because they don't want to do the phone call. Again, way more sicker than giving you access to the telephony API and every developer can do any uh, phone call that you want. You can also be a receiver with web activities. So I can say, okay, of course I need some stuff, but I can provide some stuff. So in that case, I'm gonna say, in my manifest file. This, so this is where that file is really important because it's not just about the description, it's about the permissions, it's about what your application can do. In that case, I'm gonna say, hey, I can provide JPEG and PNG, my application can do that. And if that happened, call index. So what I'm gonna do is that if the user, if another application use the pick activity and one, I don't remember, one, uh, one to JPEG or the PNG, so what's going to happen? The screen that I shown you before with the pick activities, going to have your application on top of that. So that's going to be the wallpaper, the gallery, the camera, and your application, and any other applications that are uh, handled for uh, that pick activity. If that's the case, my application will open. I'm going to check. Hey, is it an activity? This is is it the reason why my application is open? Is it a pick activity? Hey, I can manage this, and I'm going to send the picture to the application that asked me. So that gives you a way. To have your application used a little more by your user because they're going to be able to open your application because you're a provider of those activities. And what is great right now is that if you have an Android phone, you need to have Firefox installed on your phone, but those applications that use web activities is going to work on your Android phone, even if you don't use Firefox OS. So this is why I'm telling you that it's a good way to reach more people because you're going to be able to, by building a Firefox OS application, reach more people with Firefox OS, reach more people with your web application, and you're going to be able to reach more people on Android. And that's going to be way better really, really soon because we're working on something else about Android. So how to start today uh, if you want to uh, port or build your application for Firefox OS? Of course, I would, I would probably start, so uh, why you should do this? So I told you, new opportunity, you can reach new people, you can reach people that you don't have access right now, in new countries, a new type of people that were not using the web before. And it's not because those people cannot pay a $500 phone, that they're not able to pay application. And it's not because we're Mozilla, it's not because Firefox OS is made by Mozilla that your application needs to be open source or your application needs to be free. So what is great is that in the marketplace, you can sell your application or you can give it for free. If you sell your application, you have two choices when it comes to uh, selling your application. You can use uh, the marketplace to sell your application in a country where we launch. And what's going to happen is that when you sell your application, that's going to work with the operator. So the people, the user will be built on their uh, bill from their operator. So this is great because most of those people don't have access to credit card. But we don't restrict you. So you can use whatever other technology you like, whatever other services you like to sell your application. So PayPal or whatever services, you use those. We don't restrict you. You can do an app purchase also. It's like you want. We give you access to all those things. Uh, you can have some ads also. I'm not a big fan of ads, but this is a good way to make money when you give your application or when you uh, give a trial to user. This is a good way not to charge user, but trying to make money at some point. So the interesting would be uh, everything goes well. It's like seeing a unicorn in your room. Uh, that may or may not happen, as I said, as my example. It was working well. It was not perfect. I had to adapt my application to the screen. So today, right now, any web application that you already have, if it's working well on a smartphone, and I mean by that if it's uh, adapted to different screen size, and it's working on the browser, it's working on Firefox, 
you basically have a Firefox OS application. So the first step for you would be to create a manifest file, test it in the simulator, and you have you already have a Firefox OS application. Is there any Cordova or PhoneGap developer here? Actually, yeah. Uh, it was a bad question because I just don't see you. So <laughs> let's think that people uh, raise their hand. So we are working with Adobe and we just had support for Firefox OS. So if you're using PhoneGap or Cordova for people that don't know uh, that technologies, basically use HTML, CSS, JavaScript to create an application that you can target on multiple, multiple platform. That seems a little bit like meta to use PhoneGap to create a Firefox OS application using an HTML API to translate this to another HTML API that's going to work on an HTML platform. So this is not interesting if you only do that. But if you want to target Windows Phone, if you want to target iOS, if you want to target Android, WebOS, and any other platform out there, this is a really good solution. So it's not perfect yet. And by that, I mean that uh, we did not implement all the API yet with Adobe, but we're still working with them. Right now, we have uh, the API that most of the people use to think about the camera, the contact, the device, device motion, geolocation, orientation, vibration. Those APIs are available right now. And if you're building for, uh, phone gaps or Cordova application, if you plan to do so at some point, we have a program right now at Mozilla that gives you free phones. So if you go on that URL, j.mp uh, slash muz pfa in capital, we, you subscribe to that program and say, hey, I'm a phone gap developer. I already have an application published on different platform. You put a link on those application. We're going to review your uh, submission. And uh, the only thing is that we've got so many requests for that program that we cannot give a phone to everyone. We have a limited number of phone. But if you go there, uh, subscribe to that thing. We're going to review your process. If you qualify, we're going to send you a free phone. So that's going to be a developer phone, really interesting for free. And you're going to be able to test your application on Firefox OS. And on top of that, I'm going to be, me or uh, my partner, Jason, we're going to be your dedicated uh, evangelist to help you to be sure that you're going to be able to port your application on PhoneGap. So go to that link, subscribe. If you have any question about it, please uh, let me know. So right now, it's only for PhoneGap developer. But uh, we previously had application for people that already had HTML application, not using PhoneGap. And previously, we had also one for people that wanted to start HTML application. So that program changed every once in a while. Right now, we're working with PhoneGap people because we just introduced PhoneGap, and we're still working with Adobe to make this happen. So what is great with Firefox OS is that you don't need a lot of tools to be able to start working on a Firefox OS. You already have most of the tools in the browser. So you have the App Manager. It's already in the latest version of Firefox. You have the simulator. Just need to add the add-ons. This is free. It's there. We don't restrict you when it comes to an ID. Use whatever you want. Sublime, Visual Studio, Notepad. Anything that gives you uh, the opportunity to create HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, just use it. You're good to go. We also don't restrict you in terms of the platform. Using OSX, using uh, Linux, using Windows, you're good to go. How many of you knows that uh, we have some web developer tools inside Firefox? We'll try to see. And I'm not talking about uh, Firebug. Oh, people. Nah. Yeah, so um, actually, we have really, really amazing tools inside of Firefox. And what is great is that uh, just go try those tools. I don't have the time to show you right now, but go try those tools. Uh, it's good for uh, uh, developing, debugging, any web application, but it's working perfectly with Firefox OS. So you already have the tools to debug your Firefox OS application in the simulator, but also on the real device. All the information is online. You go on Mozilla Developer Network, what we call MDN. Uh, by the way, we have Chris Davis Mill uh, that is at the uh, FITC also. He is one of the writer. Uh, go see his presentation about HTML. Actually, there's going to talk a little bit about Firefox OS. So, um, but most of the proper network, everything around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, things around Firefox, things around other browser, a lot of things around Firefox OS, a lot of things around Firefox for Android, how to build add-ons. So a lot of information is there. Everything you need about Firefox OS is online. The documentation is there. This is an open wiki. So if you find something missing, edit the wiki, add some stuff, you find some errors in the documentation, please go ahead. Uh, this is the Mozilla way of doing things. Stack Overflow, it's, uh, 
I was going to see if Attack Overflow is new. It's not new. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a technical forum uh, where you go to search for answer for your question or just ask your question and nobody has the same question as you. So you can go on Stack Overflow and we have a Firefox OS tag. And myself, Jason, and other people on my team, we are uh, actively monitoring that forum. So if you have a technical question about Firefox OS, because after the conference we're going to start to work on a Firefox OS application, you can of course send me an email. I'm going to be more than happy to help you. The thing is that I got a lot of emails. So if you go on Stack Overflow, there is a lot of great things about this because first, uh, if I don't have the time because I'm traveling a lot for presentation and events, there is probably someone else that will answer the question first. Maybe I don't know the answer. Someone else may know the answer. And the good thing is that we're building a FAQ online because the first thing to do when you go on Stack Overflow, instead of starting to type your question, you just search if someone already had your question. So by using Stack Overflow, instead of sending me an email, First, that helped, to, that helped me to reach inbox zero. And uh, as I said, that built the FAQ. And if you want, create a question, send me an email with a link to your question. I'm going to be more than happy. But I really want to, be the, to have most things online. And if you uh, don't want to ask it online, just send me an email. And I'm going to be even more happy to answer your question. I was talking about the Firefox OS bottle plate. Just to remember, it's on GitHub. Uh, if you want to see how it's working on Firefox OS, please uh, go. Uh, use that application, you can add some stuff, add some feature missing. And what is great is that what I show you, as I said, we launched the idea two years ago. We launched the first phone one year ago, but it's only the beginning. We have way more phones coming, way more partners coming, way more APIs coming. Think about web USB, think about web NFC, things you will be able to do with JavaScript, things you will be able to do with HTML, CSS. Of course, most of those things work right now in Firefox OS. But as I said, we work with W3C, we work with the standards to be sure that those will be part of the web standards. And if I'm not wrong, I think there's already some API like battery status. I think it's working in uh, Google Chrome Canary. So other people are bringing, uh, we're bringing people to the party. So two things for the end, and I stop talking after. Uh, first things, let's get back to my question at the beginning. Like next time, you're going to have that discussion with the customers. You're going to have the discussion with yourself. Because that may happen if you talk to yourself. <laughs> What's going to be the next application? What's going to be the next platform? I would highly suggest you to start with a web application. Because you're going to give access to your application to many people. And after, if you did a great job, you can reuse some company and you can reuse some web services. And uh, you're going to be able to create an iPhone. You're going to be able to create an Android application. And personal story, like slice of life, I was so frustrated for a couple of years because when I was working at Microsoft, I was using Windows Phone, and I had all the application that I need, but every new services, every new uh, cool stuff that was uh, going online, iPhone, Android first, and now I'm using Firefox OS, and like, hey, can you give me access to web version, if it's a, if, even if it's a lighter version? You won't send me the message that you don't want me as a customer. So at least start with web, and uh, of course, there are some resources that's going to be available online, some links to what I talk about. And of course, my last point, if you want to port your application to Firefox OS, if you think to build a specific application for Firefox OS, if you plan to use PhoneGap or Cordoba, if you apply to the program that I was talking about, if there is anything that crosses your mind about Firefox OS, please let me know. I want to know what you're building, I want to know what you're thinking about, I want to know your feedback about the product, I want to know what is good, what is bad, what is terrible. Uh, please let me know. Send me an email, ping me on Twitter, add me on LinkedIn. There is a ton of way to, I should have saved that. Yeah, there is a lot of way to contact me. Uh, if you have some time, go on hacks.mozilla.com. Even if you don't have time, go on hacks.mozilla.com. This is a really good blog uh, with technical blog posts made by our team and, and many people in the product team at Mozilla. So all technical blog posts around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, something specific to Firefox, something specific to Firefox OS, really interesting. Again. Out of comfortzone.net, personal blog, uh, sometimes technical, sometimes not technical, sometimes in French, sometimes in English, most of the time in Franklish. And my presentation and the, the slides and the recording will be online. So if I still have some time, any question, comment, and salt?